and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. My dear friends, in the previous lecture we talked about the use of visuals in oral presentation, but equally important is the use of connectives in oral presentation and that is why this talk has been entitled use of connectives in oral presentations. Now, you might be thinking what are connectives and how connectives are used and why should they be used. Let me ask you a question, how many of you have left a presentation midway as a listener and what actually could be the region. So, once you leave a presentation midway and proceed towards the T stall, then you find that you are not the only one. There are some more friends of yours also who have left the presentation midway and have come to have a sip of tea. If you ask them why did they leave and you think of what actually compelled, impelled you to leave the presentation, the answer to a great extent will be the same. I think you leave a presentation at times because you feel the presentation is very half a jawed, it is very complicated, it is actually not ordered properly and that is why you are not in a position to understand everything. My dear friends, the answer to your question is that the presenter or the speaker could not make a proper use of connectives. Now, you might be thinking what are these connectives? Actually, connectives are words or phrases that actually connect the ideas in a presentation or speech and they actually establish a sort of relationship, fine. When you actually do not have any friend, how will you share your experience? So, you also have so many connections in life and these connections actually help you, they actually provide you a sort of confidence. So, is the case with the use of connections in oral presentations. A connective is a technique of using words and phrases to put ideas together. When you write your presentation or your speech, so what do you see? You have gathered a lot of information. Now, you are going to weave the information and when you are going to weave the information, tailor the information, you actually want to put it in a sequence and that sequence should be bound by coherence, by unity, by logic as we have discussed earlier. So, these connectives provide the overall presentation a natural and cohesive flow. Why do you often feel attracted to the smooth flow of water in a river? Because it is in a continuity, is not it? So, the presentation also should be like that they actually provide the audience an initial framework of the presentation and that is why they make your ideas worth and applicable as in a unit. Now, before we go to see what are these connectives, what are the examples, let me first try to make it very clear as to what could be the basic rules for using connectives. What are those rules? Those rules are that there are different types of connectives. As a school going child you might have uh, come across one part of speech that was conjunction and this conjunction used to join two words, is not it? Here when you talk about connectives, they also connect, they connect ideas, the sentences are being connected, connectives actually are supposed to used 
only once in one sentence. If you make use of so many connectives in one sentence, the sentence actually will become very lopsided. Now, let us have some examples of connectives. Now, here you can find that connectives can be there in vocabulary and you can find that even if there are so many words in a sentence and the sentence appears to be very odd, then what will you do? You actually will try to provide relief. The way you provided relief by making use of visuals. So, here you are going to provide uh, relief by making use of connectives such as although I tried to keep my lecture short, but the content was not to be refused. If you really work hard in life, you will succeed. You will find that you know both the sentences I have made use of connectives. Since the work was to be completed this week only, I had to put a lot of efforts. Now, we are putting conditions. So, you will find that when we make use of connectives in a speech or in a presentation, they actually uh, provide not only a relief, if visuals provided a relief to the eye, connectives provide a relief to the ear, my dear friends. You might find that students learn many discourses of, of connectives quite incidentally, but then when they are made to understand the worth of connectives, they will perhaps find it very easier when they are going to weave their talks for their presentation. Now, what sort of these connectives can be and what do these connectives do? Now, here you can find these connectives can so continuation fine. Connectives can give examples, connectives can help you compare fine. Connectives can help you so similarity, it can also help you and it can also help the audience members to know where they are in the midst of their talk. Because you know if there is a talk which is very long enough, we often want to know where is the speaker, when is he going to say to conclude in sum before I uh, conclude my point of discussion and you will find by making use of these expression, the speaker provides a sort of indication to the audience and the audience feel relieved. So, when we are making use of continuation, I mean one thought and the thought continues. So, we often say additionally let me inform you that it is not only a matter of content, but it is also a matter of context for an effective presentation fine. Following these lectures, you will be in a better condition to know as to what and when you can make use of these technical nuances when you are giving a presentation fine. So, these are the examples of connectives which actually show continuation. There are connectives which also help you provide examples. For example, when you say for example, this is again a sort of connective. When you say for instance, the students who are loitering outside, they perhaps are aimless and they simply wanted uh, to flee from the class the moment they got an opportunity. Now, you see how I have made use of connectives. Sometimes as a speaker, you want to emphasize upon certain points and for that, you actually make use of connectives by saying specifically, you need to remember fine. With this in mind, now you can really bring laurels to your institution. Surprisingly, I have found most of the speakers being very conscious of whether the audience members are conscious or not. These connectives also help you so place. For example, when you are describing something, when you are explaining something, no, you always say in the background of this talk lies a lot of labor. Now, so you are saying something, uh, you are showing them some space or place. 
the building opposite to ELC is fine in a stage that actually requires more thinking, is not it? Now, adjacent to sometimes we say the architecture department is adjacent to WRTD, is not it? So, you are making use of. So, likewise, when you are giving a professional presentation, you may be in a position where you can bring a sort of relief by bringing all these use of connectives. Sometimes you can also make a mention of time. Till now, I have been delivering my lectures on public speaking, fine. So, till now, sometimes we say at the present juncture, it is not worthwhile for students to leave their classes midway, fine. To begin with, let me tell you that public speaking is an art that can be cultivated. The lecture will come to an end in a moment, fine, but then you will remember it for the entire life, is not it. So, we are showing time, then we are also showing correlation, I mean unless and until ideas, experiences, statements are correlated, you are not in a position to make your talk presentation very explicit. That is why you say neither the students nor the teachers, fine. Sometimes you say the lectures on public speaking are not going to help only students, but also many of the professionals who at times feel themselves quite helpless when they have to give an impromptu speech fine. So, this actually shows correlation and then similarity which is very common you say like as I said previously fine. Having said that now is the time sometimes you say as I mentioned in the beginning equally important is the use of connectives in oral presentation or in professional presentations. Now, here you can find time connectives time connectives you already know fine yesterday tomorrow when we talk about other days uh, you talk about the part of the day sometimes you say at last in the evening sometimes you say when I was 2 when I was 12 years old sometimes you say afterwards fine the classes will be held 8 am onwards now you are making use of the connective uh, which actually shows time. Now, there are some other types of connectives also that actually can help you understand the worth of connectives in your professional presentation. They can be sign posts, can be transitions, can be internal previews and can be internal summaries. We shall discuss all of them separately with examples so that they may provide you with explicit examples. Say if we start talking about transitions, now what are transitions? The meaning lies in the word itself, fine. When actually you want to bring a change, say for example, in an oral presentation, you complete one thought and you are going to start a new thought. So, you will use certain words or phrases that can be called transitions. Say for example, Time and again we say, having said that now let me come to the depth of the discussion, having said that. Sometimes we say, it is time now that we stopped this lecture, fine. It is time now that we begin our classes offline, fine. In addition, please remember that those who have been attending the lectures regularly will never have a feeling of helplessness when the examination time comes. Besides, this also remember that sincere people even though they may suffer at times, but ultimately they become very triumphant. Although I have been providing you a lot of examples, but then you are free to make or give your own, own examples as well. Now, another term is internal previews. Now, when a person as a speaker speaks, the speaker also provides some sort of indication about what he is going to say next. And this actually gives the audience members a sort of help by telling them where the speaker is. 
Say for example, a speaker will say, we shall discuss now uh, the characteristics or the nuances of the various techniques of speaking. First, we shall spend some time on the prerequisites of speaking and then we will examine whether they can be used efficiently. I also want to emphasize upon, now when you say I also want to emphasize upon, the audience members actually uh, instantly know that the speaker is going to say something uh, further, is not it? And then comes internal summary. Internal summary as the term itself defines internal what a speaker is saying from time to time he summarizes. How? How can he summarize? By recalling what has been said. You might have heard me saying as you remember that in the previous lecture I discussed fine. Sometimes you say having discussed now in short let me tell you that public speaking is not everyone's cup of tea. In brief, let me tell you that those who really work hard will always be a triumphant speaker. Hence, you must all see to it that you have taken all these lectures very seriously. I hope you might have done a lot of homework, but when it comes to the class work, you have to show the real examples. So, these are all the examples of internal summaries and now comes the sign posts. Actually, in most of the speaking situations, you will find the audience members looking for something. What are they looking for? They actually are trying to know how this talk or presentation is located, where is the presentation now? And for that, the speaker can provide a relief by saying, firstly, let me discuss, secondly, so all these are actually they are showing locations of the talk. To summarize, let me say that it actually requires a good spirit combined with a lot of labor to succeed in any profession. To sum up my talk, now again I say to sum up my talk, sometimes you say to begin with, uh, before I end my talk. So, what are all these? These are all sign posts. So, you are indicating where the talk or the presentation is. Now, when we talk about sign posts, they are brief statements and they actually mark where the speaker is exactly during a presentation. It can also, I mean sign posts can also be a question of offering good audience interaction and also it is most often used, sign posts are very popular. So, it is most often used and it is actually a popular type of connective. You can, though we have already provided some examples in the previous uh, slide, but here also you can find and sometimes it is numerical also. Say for example, the first cause of less traffic movement last year was owing to the outbreak of COVID-19. The second cause in the pre-existing bad health conditions of people in general. Please see to it that if you make a mention of first, it is actually needed that you make a mention of second. If you make a mention of firstly, make a mention of secondly and then if there is nothing then say finally. So, that will actually help you weave a pattern and provide a sort of pattern to your listeners as well and that is very important my dear friend. Next transitions as I said earlier, they actually are connectives which not only consist of words and phrases, but they indicate that one unit, one thread of thought 
is over and another thread of th thought or ideas uh, is likely to begin. Some material from the previous idea is used by following the new what you have said earlier. Now, you are going to connect to it say for example, uh, some of the connectives have been uh, used in balls. Now, that we have seen that breathing problems are an outcome of pollution allow me to explain how we can do the damage control. You can find here we have used in the beginning also now that fine there are transitions and then allow me to explain how we can do the damage control. Now, here uh, you can also find uh, below Jack left before and whenever Jill arrived. So, before and whenever even though they appear like conjunctions, but they are also connectives. My dear friends, when we talk about connectives, you will find that many conjunctions also because they act as sentence linkers. They can link words, they can link sentences and that is why their use in an oral presentation is mandatory my dear friends. Now, internal previews as I said earlier, let me once again emphasize that internal previews as uh, defined by Lukacs in his book The Art of uh, Speaking fine. He says it is a statement in the body of the speech or presentation that lets the audience members know what the speaker is going to discuss next. They are very much like transitions. In fact, these transitions embody all these. Now, let us take an example. Now, that we have seen that breathing problems are an outcome of pollution, allow me to explain how we can do the damage control. So, this had already been said earlier, is not it? Now, the next sentence that comes is a sort of internal previews. Learn to get up in the morning and work out for an hour, fine. So, when you have said something earlier, now you are going to connect and while you are going to connect, you are allowing the audience to know what the speaker is going to discuss. Now, in internal summaries, it is just opposite of internal previews. It is just opposite. It actually summarizes what the audience just heard. It is usually used when a presenter finishes the complicated portion of delivery and then he takes up next. They are actually appropriate tools for clarifying and reinforcing the speaker's ideas that is why they have a vital role to play as connectives. Now, let me give you an example here. Let us pause for a moment to summarize what are the events. So, the moment the speaker says let us pause for a moment to summarize what are the events covered so far. Firstly, India's public washroom system is becoming more effective because of the ongoing construction drive. Secondly, now you see here we have used firstly and then we are using secondly. People are also willing to use public washrooms rather than defecate in open and public spaces. Now, the functions of connectives include linking the sentences together. Fine, you might have found that when you write uh, the speech or the presentation, you will find sometimes it appears very monotonous. So, is the case when a speaker speaks and specially this is very much required. When somebody is giving a presentation on technical topics, it becomes very difficult. So, in order to provide a breather, these connectives are used. They make presentation more unified and coherent. We have been saying time and again that coherence, unity and logic these are the three unities 
which actually unify a presentation or a speech. So, connectives help the speaker and the audience. We have already discussed that how it relates to or how it reinforces the audience's memory and also the memory of the speaker. When used effectively, one can really excel in every situation and platform of public speaking. Now, sometimes you may find that even the use of punctuation also does a lot in providing a sort of breather. Of course, as a speaker, when you speak, how do you provide this breather? With the help of the punctuation. So, in order to express one's idea in a very clear manner, you require basic grammar. And when you know the basic grammar, you find the sentences are to be structured in a very simple. My dear friends, I have already said in one of the lectures that presentation is different from writing. Writers are different from speakers. So, conjunctions, when I made a mention of conjunctions, conjunctions require the use of parallelism. Say for example, you will find uh, that when you use some units of thoughts, the next unit of thought or a phrase or a collection of words have to have a sort of parallelism. For example, the advantages that public speaking provides you are three, confidence, commitment and vitality. These three words that I have used, commitment, confidence and vitality, all these words are nouns. Sometimes a speaker may say, he may use a compliment. So, if he uses three things or four things, so all the other including the first one has to be in the same order. That is what I mean by parallelism. For example, swimming is difficult, but not impossible, but not impossible. Use of conjunctions here. In learning express it is said, expressing complete ideas and clearly indicating where the sentences begin and end are essential not only for effective writing, but for effective speaking also. Sentences at times can have boundaries and sometimes they can have a sort of run on. For example, you say something in the first sentence, but half of what you want to complement or complete your sentence actually run on in the second one. When it is in fragments, and incomplete sentences, there is absence of complete thought which can be completed in the next one. Sometimes you miss complete verbs, for example, uh, here you can say which is simply not true. Now, uh, anyone can ask which is simply not true, can it be a sentence? No. So, it actually requires something, but if we say which, if we say which is a sort of interrogative which becomes a subject there. Sometimes we can say in, in place of which you can substitute this which because we have already said that no two connectives can be used fine together. So, we can say that is simply not true the sentence actually has a sort of completion. When you talk about a run on sentence you find as I said earlier that the sentence runs on to the next without proper punctuation between them and either no punctuation or just a comma, but commas alone are not enough to separate two complete ideas. You can find the examples here. Let us get up, it is getting late, fine. You find that even though this sentence is spoken, when you speak, you actually find the need of taking a pause. Say for example, we can say, let us get up, it is getting late. So, some breath here is allowed. Whether or not you believe me, she is unhappy, I did not lie to you. Now, in this sentence you find the sentence actually should be split and it should have a sort of run on. Here I have made a mention of uh, the use of connectives. If you have listened to all the lectures seriously, I am pretty sure that you will emerge as an effective public speaker in the days to come. My dear friends, you might have by this time realized that not only 
use of visuals is important, but equally important is the use of connectives. Here I have written some sentences through which you can test your knowledge of connectives. Let us start with the first. Since we have discussed the prerequisites of public speaking, let us talk about the types of public speaking. Now, what sort of connective has been used here? Here is actually a sort of transition, is not it? Since we have discussed the prerequisites of public speaking, let us talk about the types of public speaking. The second sentence, learners of public speaking course will emerge triumphant by knowing how to effectively use matter and manner and also knowing how to control the attention of their audience. So, what is being done in this sentence and to which category of connective does it belong? You will find that here this speaker is telling the audience members what actually is to follow. That is why we can call it internal preview, internal preview. Now, let us take the next one. I hope now you are confident of using visuals in your presentation as discussed in the previous lecture, how placing wrongly may cause embarrassment. My dear friends, here what the speaker is doing? The speaker is actually giving a sort of internal summary and let us come to the last sentence and there is an indicator you all will come to know. Finally, we must focus upon the significance of etiquettes in public speaking. My dear friends, I have time and again been saying that public speaking is an art. Public speaking provides you with numerous opportunities of speaking and displaying your mental disposition and personality in the most effective manner. I do hope that in the days to come, not only you will emerge as an effective speaker, but will also attract, also pull crowds to listen to you. And the time now has come that I stopped this lecture, but not before making a mention of the quote by Dale Carnegie, who says, only the prepared speaker deserves to be confident. And I think the way you are preparing yourself, you are going to emerge as a confident speaker who has lots of commitment, lots of cordiality, lots of conviction. With this, let me come to the end of this talk. I wish you all the best and also look forward to seeing you emerge as a triumphant public speaker. Thank you very much.